Yesterday, XAI announced the launch of Grok 3, which is giving the current AI models a real run for their money. At the beginning of the broadcast, the XAI team put up this chart tracking the reasoning progress of different models of Grok against different models of ChatGPT. Now, it is worth taking this with a grain of salt since Elon Musk has been trying to purchase OpenAI just like he did with Twitter and it's obviously in his best interest to try and devalue that company as much as possible, whether he wants to acquire the company or if he's just going to compete with them like he is now. So it's best for him to try to convince people that his team has been able to produce a better model in the fraction of the time as OpenAI. Now, on the flip side of this, X did manage to build their own data center to train Grok with the largest known GPU cluster in the world. They call it Colossus, which is said to house 200,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs. So this would be at least twice as powerful as the next best GPU cluster out there. And another big benefit that X has here with training Grok and creating their own AI models is that they can actually optimize these GPUs down to the hardware level because they've got their very own data center. Now with OpenAI, they're primarily operating on Microsoft's Azure platform. So basically they're using Microsoft's hardware primarily. I think they're also working on building their own data center, but they're not quite there yet. And I'm sure that OpenAI has agreements with Microsoft that give them more access to the platform than your typical Azure subscription would give you. And I'm sure that they can make a few more optimizations than we at home can. But when you have a single company that owns and operates the entire tech stack down to the bare metal like X does, they're obviously able to do many more optimizations than OpenAI can. And really the feat of just getting the cluster to train Grok3 on working might honestly be more impressive than Grok itself. So X got this data center running with 100,000 GPUs to start with within 122 days. And then they added another 100,000 in 92 days. And they had to solve, well, power issues for one because this data center currently uses about 250 megawatts of power and Tesla actually came in handy there. They used Tesla Megapacks to help handle the buffering of power surges when the AI model is starting up and shutting down. And they did a custom water cooling system. And you can only imagine what the fans that are used to cool down 200,000 data center GPUs sounds like. And there were also plans discussed during the broadcast on X to expand this Colossus data center and maybe even build a couple of new ones. There's memes going around, which is typical, of course, for anything that Elon gets involved in, but it's the Back to the Future meme, 1.21 gigawatts. And the single Colossus data center is already using about 0.25 gigawatts of power. So Grok might get to that magic meme number sooner than we think. And hopefully we can get some good nuclear power to feed this behemoth. There were also plans discussed to upgrade from the H100 GPUs that X is currently using to H200s, which have almost doubled the onboard memory and of course better performance and scaling for running large language models than the previous generation of enterprise graphics cards. And based on the benchmarks here, Rock 3 is in another league of its own for math, science, and coding compared to the other models. An early version of Grok 3 that was codenamed Chocolate was also able to outperform every other chatbot in IM Arena. And if you're not familiar with this platform, it lets you do a blind test between various AI chatbots and the end users vote on the results that they got from the two going head to head. So this is a much more democratic test that's supposed to avoid any bias being introduced to the voting. 
which is understandable because you have to pay a monthly subscription to use most AI models. So people might be tempted to vote for the model that they're already paying for. You know, it's that sunk cost fallacy. And speaking of paying, <laughs> Grok3 is paywalled. So this is not an open source model. You can't run it locally on your own hardware. And the only way to use Grok3 is through the web or an app when you're logged into an X account that has a premium plus subscription, which by the way, that costs $40 a month. So there's been another price hike to the cost of X subscriptions because of Grok. I believe premium plus was $22 a month just last year. And the really unfortunate thing about this subscription requirement for Grok is that most of what you're paying for isn't even related to Grok. If we take a look at these subscription tiers on help.x.com, the basic tier lets you edit posts on Twitter. It lets you make longer posts and you can do video posts, extra formatting, etc. The premium subscription gets you that coveted check mark on Twitter next to your username. You get fewer ads, which might partially relate to Grok because I guess it's conceivable that ads could be shown in an LLM service because they're shown everywhere else these days. But again, most of what you're paying for just gets you stuff on the Twitter platform. And the same is true into the Premium Plus tier. And since Grok increased the price of X Premium Plus by $18, that's probably what access to Grok without any of the Twitter fluff is really worth, which is much more in line with the cost of these other models. So this is the downside of the all-in-one app and subscription model that Elon Musk envisioned for the platform formerly known as Twitter. Now, even though Grok3 has a steep paywall and is absolutely proprietary, the good news here for the open source community is that we should be getting Grok2 soon. So in case you didn't know, Grok1 was open sourced actually a few months before the launch of Grok2 and in the X live stream from yesterday, Elon Musk stated that he does plan to open source Grok2 once Grok3 becomes stable. So in the past we've open sourced Grok1 Right, so somebody's asking us, are we going to do it again with Grok2? Yeah, I think um, when, once Grok, our general approach is that we will open source the last version when the next version is fully out. Mm -hmm. so like when, when Grok3 is um, mature and stable, which is probably within a few months, then we'll, then we'll open source Grok2. Now, I am a little bit skeptical about this claim because other Grok models like Grok 1.5, 1.5v, and Grok 2 Mini have not been open sourced yet. So the track record is already not so good in my opinion, but it's definitely worth keeping an eye out for if some consistency does come out of XAI's open sourcing schedule, then we might see them actually end up producing the world's best open source AI within just a couple of years. And this is assuming that Grok 4 or 5 comes out in a couple of years and they actually do stick to releasing Grok 3 through that open sourcing model that I just explained. So do you actually think that Elon is going to make good on creating the best AI models for humanity? Or do you think that DeepSeek is going to remain on top for creating the best open source models and I guess OpenAI the best closed source models? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm and buy some of my merch from Based.Win. 10% discount store wide when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.